Oh, so nice to be live. So nice to be back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And more specifically, this is Likeable Science. Isn't that fabulous? Like the good old days with Ethan Allen. Remember him? And Ethan joins us today on Likeable Science. Hi, Ethan. How are you? Hey, Jay. I'm well. How about yourself? Good. I'm, I'm uh, happy and, and good news. I'm in good health. So, Ethan, tell Excellent. us what you've been doing. You went, you went to APCSS. And APCSS, like everybody else, is affected by coronavirus. Can you talk about it? Sure. We're, we're, we're all, like so many others, we're all on telework now. We, we, uh, so I, I sit at home all day and, and work via computer, do all my meetings uh, via different uh, web-based meeting technologies, uh, writing papers, that, that kind of thing. Uh, I, but I should put in a little disclaimer here that, that anything you hear today is, is purely my own personal opinion, does not in any sense reflect uh, government viewpoints or anything like that. Fair enough. So let's begin our substantive discussion. You know, the thing we were going to discuss, uh, at least primarily, uh, is the technology that was announced in uh, all the tech journals and the newspapers a couple days ago. That is that, um, you know, Google and Apple are collaborating. Uh, in an app, uh, which you could put on your smartphone, that would help track coronavirus cases. Uh, can you talk about it? Well, what's really interesting to, to me is that the two who generally have not collaborated on very many things at all are working apparently very much hand in glove to uh, make this happen. They, they recognize the power of having a good way to track contacts, track potential cases uh, that is such a uh, it's the key to keeping the whole thing under control if you can know when you test somebody who they and they test positive who they've been in touch with in the past uh, days or weeks uh, that's you, you've got this tremendous leg up on the whole business because you can go to those people then and get them tested and find out uh, before they go off and start, start spreading uh, the, the virus so uh, it's, it's an incredibly powerful thing um, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to see how that comes out. Well, I always said that if they threw you and me in a room together and gave us a couple of hours, we could, we could solve any, any problem, uh, design any app, whatever. So why don't we spend a few <laughs> minutes here, Ethan, and, and design this app, okay? You download it on All your right. phone. It's going to use, <laughs> uh, I suppose it's going to use GPS, maybe, uh, maybe Bluetooth, uh, and it's going right. to, it's going to, uh, watch people near you. And Bluetooth has a radius, what, uh, a distance, a range of uh, what, like maybe 20, 30 feet, maybe, maybe more. I'm not sure about that. Um, and, and wireless, of course, is, is, is greater. GPS is, well, unlimited. Um, so the question is, uh, what would it be looking for uh, and what would it do with the data that it got? So this is an interesting thing that they both Google and Apple have made very public statements about the, absolutely they, they want to protect users' privacy. And this is purely a voluntary <clears throat> system. So you would have to download it onto your app. And then, I mean, onto your phone, download this app. And then if you tested positive and reported this to some appropriate government agency, and it wasn't quite clear who you had to report this to, but then you could essentially label yourself on this app as, as a positive case. And this app apparently would go back and search for some period of time, search your Bluetooth and yeah, I, I guess uh, how you would contact other people. And somehow, and this is the part I actually do not understand well from the descriptions I've read, without revealing who those people are, somehow get in touch with them and let them know that, that they have been exposed basically, or may have been exposed. You know, they had contact with with a positive case. No, well, yeah, I, well, I imagine it goes both ways. <clears throat> if it somehow knows that uh, you're positive, it's going to tell the people around you, or uh, somehow deal with that. I mean, somehow communicate that uh, to somebody. Um, and and if the guy around you uh, is positive, then it's going to tell you and, and somehow, and and then you can take some action about that. These are all very interesting questions from a, you know, a, com a computer and a kind of social connection, a, a computer communication connection issue. Uh, and you're right, right, they're loaded with ethical questions and privacy 
questions. But, but let's let's go further. <clears throat> so this means uh, you say voluntary, but you know voluntary has a way of becoming involuntary, such as in China. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me let me refresh right. that in in China, you you have to have your phone on. You must have it on. If it's not on, you can't demonstrate that to the police. I guess you're in trouble. Um, so you must have your phone on. And uh, and I suppose that if if you had a, a positive test on this, um, that somehow is going to be connected with you. There's going to be a database somewhere that says on your phone, you yeah, know, this guy has a positive test. Um, <clears throat> then the police would know that, or you would know that, and uh, arguably if this uh, app is emulated in China, maybe it'll, maybe they'll just give it to China. You know, I mean, this is a worldwide issue. Um, <clears throat> then the, the guy nearby, he will know that you, you know. And I mean, I guess the most useful, correct me if I'm wrong, the most useful recipient of this information about who's near you and who may have, uh, who, ha who has been near you. You know, it's like that secret Apple, Apple file that was such a, such a, a conundrum a, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, where <clears throat> they found that in the Apple phone, there was a, um, a GPS uh, data file, uh, which kept the record of every place you'd been essentially by the minute. And everybody said, gee, why, why do you need, I don't need that information. Um, is that going back to Apple? And Apple said, no comment. It was really creepy. <laughs> I don't know if it still exists, but, but you know, here we have the same kind of thing. Uh, we have that phone, which could be registered on a location basis, sending back little beeps about where you are. Um, who would be most interested in this? Well, if it was chi if in China, especially Wuhan, um, the government would be the most interested party. Not you, not the guy, you know, 20 feet away, but you. <clears throat> and that's very troubling because it's an inevitable shift of this app, don't you think? I, I don't know how inevitable it is, but it certainly would be very appealing to any central authority to have that kind of information. Now, as I said, both Apple and uh, Google have come out very strong, made very strong, very public, very definite statements that uh, the user's privacy is utmost in this. And th th this data is somehow stripped of any identifying characteristics uh, so that nobody getting it can can make any personal identification. I'm not okay, well, let, really sophisticated. Let's let's uh, let's take the government out of the equation. It's a later thing. We, we can revisit that as time goes by. But um, <clears throat> the um, uh, I guess the interesting thing for me is if, if somebody is um, within X feet of me and uh, within range and that person has been recorded somehow or has recorded himself somehow, as a, as a test positive, um, then I would know. It would tell me, <clears throat> and it would tell me why. Better get tested, right? It would tell me that. It would tell me, uh, ooh, quick, wash your hands or whatever, you know, kind of um, uh, therapeutic things it could do. It would tell me to take a therapeutic drug, maybe. Uh, it would take me, you know, tell me to be very careful, I guess. Um, it, would, it would probably yeah, be smart enough to give me, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> You know, it's, it's interesting. What, what would it do that would protect the user's privacy? So you walk into a room, there's one person in the room, and suddenly your app goes off and says, you know, uh-oh, uh-oh. You know? Uh, I mean, right away, you're, you're going to sort of know, like, oh, okay, Joe over there. Uh, you know, and yes, uh, I mean, right now, of course, there is, there is no particular uh, drug that, that's uh, been demonstrated to be very effective uh, in protecting us. So yes, all it could really do is give you a sort of heads up and yes, perhaps some good advice to go, uh, yes, go wash your hands, uh, move yourself out of an area. If you, and if, it, if you've been around long enough, you know, you should probably then self-isolate too. Yeah, you know, another possibility is I said, what, 20 feet and you know, the rule is six feet. And of course, we know now that it travels by micro, micro droplets and all that. But even micro droplets are not immediate and they're not that close. So what it could do, the range of the Bluetooth or the range of the wireless is going to be more than the range of the micro droplets, which means you could say, Jay, 
Jay, there's somebody in this room. And he's, you know, it's like a radar in, in, in naval warfare. <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody in this room and he's, you know, at, at 30 degrees and he's coming closer <laughs> to you and he's not yet in range. It's time for you to change your room. Get out of this room and take a walk. <laughs> right. I mean, this is it. How, how will this thing work? That's what, what I want to see is, yeah. Will it give you that kind of heads up that, you know, there, there is a potential virus shedder coming within range, you know, and, and you best watch out. Is, is it going to do that or is it only going to alert you, you know, after the fact, which, which would be a little bit less useful. But if it, but if it, it does, it does have and, the information at the fact, though, it would have that. It, it would have a, a range uh, that's beyond the range of the droplets, hopefully. And it would be able to tell you in advance of whether this person is coming in your direction. I love this. This is really out of science yeah. fiction. But <laughs> Give you some advice. Does it, yeah, I mean, do, does it know whether a person is in another room, right? If the person's in the next room, even if they're three feet away from you, two feet away from you, there may be no risk at all to you, right? I mean, you don't want to walk in that next room, but uh, how does, does this app know this? Uh, and furthermore, the one thing they point out, uh, one of the articles I was reading was that the um, it's going to rely on self-reports. So, of course, people being people, there will be people who will, who will doubtless self-report as being positive. And so that'll sort of screw with the system, right? Uh, you know, well, I, I want to dwell, because I want then dwell on that. There's a big privacy issue there because, you know, it's very unlikely that the average person in any state of the union, maybe any country, and I don't know how this could be changed, will will tell you, hey, Ethan, and I just went down to HPH and I and I got I got a test and they told me I'm positive. Um, you're going to tell me that not so quick, because it's a total stigma. You know, as soon as you tell me that, whoop, you know, you back off, don't touch this guy, you know, make distance. And, and uh, I'm thinking that most people that I can imagine won't tell you. They will not reveal this. It's a secret. It's, it's, a, a, it's a HIPAA privacy thing rather than a public health thing, don't you think? Well, yeah, I mean, there is sort of historically, it's been true that any, any of the big epidemics there have been very heavy stigma attached to, to the disease. Back at the, the plague, smallpox, tuberculosis, any of these things, uh, that there was basically a, uh, yeah, in some cases, very severe penalties for, for being thought even to have it. Um, you, you might be literally burned alive, you know, uh, back in back in the medieval days. So that is one of the very interesting things. Will the public at large use this to report themselves or will they all, as you sort of say, you know, why, why should I tell them that that's just going to, it's going to scare everyone around me? Uh, you know, why, why should I do that? Like what's, what's in it for me sort of as a, as a sufferer from this disease? Yeah, I, you'd have to find an incentive and we can brain, brain, uh, do a brain, a brain uh, meeting on that too. But it just, it occurred to me though, that there's room for mischief here. If you could hack into somebody and self-report him, uh, that would be mm, that would be really drastic because it, it would mean everybody around him would say no, uh, I don't want to be anywhere near that guy. Um, you know, and even though he doesn't have a positive result, I don't be any near that guy. I don't want to do business with him. I don't want to have anything to do. And he's isolated now. Uh, he's a pariah. He's a pariah. Um, and you could really screw somebody up by by making a false report. So how do you how do you keep this straight? First of all, you have to prevent hackers. You have to prevent mischief. I think it's very important. I, mean, right. I don't know how you do that. Maybe maybe one thing is you impose horrendous penalties. Anybody tries that. Two is, you know, you, mm -hmm. you lock the system down so nobody can do it. But on the voluntary side, how do you incentivize people to be honest and to push the button and say, yes, I'm positive, all by themselves as a voluntary matter? How do you do that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's a very intriguing uh, distinction. All of us would love to see this app and have it and be able to know, like, there is somebody, a potential virus shedder coming near me. You know, so and so uh, 
is, is likely shedding the virus. Therefore, yes, I should stay away from so-and-so. And, you know, we would all, a bunch of people would probably pay good money for that, right? Just for that, that knowledge because it brings safety. But as you point out, will people report it? Will people report about themselves? So, that, you know, everyone, everyone wants it for everyone else, but nobody wants it for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it strikes me that if, the, if, if we want this system to really work in the theoretical as, as contemplated, uh, we're not, we voluntary, voluntary may not work simply because of the pariah aspect of the, the stigma. Um, so maybe there's a sort of narrow pathway that it can be done, um, you know, on a non-voluntary basis. Um, that's euphemistic, I know. Um, so <laughs> for example, I, I go and I get tested and my test is positive. Now, part of the transaction in which I am advised that my test is positive is that, uh, I got to tell them my cell phone. And, and I got I go into a database, and maybe as you say, it's anonymous. It's just by my cell phone, I guess. Um, and and that that means the government, or at least the state government, or at least the health system, has a database of all the positives, and they put it on my phone. So I guess um, what I'm saying is that it, it may not be, uh, it may not work very well as voluntary. And maybe we have to bring in third parties and maybe we have to plant it on your phone. Maybe we have to tell you that if you're out and about um, and your phone will know um, that this phone must be on and that app must be on or you're going to be penalized in some way. In that way, the system would be absolute. It would work. Everybody would know the guy in the next room or you know, the, the fellow coming down on me at, at, at 30 degrees uh, you know, I'm going to be in my in my range in, in five seconds. Everybody would know. Uh, it would make me paranoid, by the way. I'd be looking at the phone all the time, waiting for that beep. You know, <laughs> right. but maybe everyone, that's everyone turn on their alerts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is it is interesting if, if you look. I don't I don't know if you had this experience, but without ever trying, some music showed up on iTunes for me. There was some music from certain artists who. Arrange through iTunes to have their music downloaded to everyone's iTunes, basically. And and they did it without. I never asked for it. I never told them to do it. But I've got I've got their music. And if they can do that, then yes, they could take this app, presumably, and download it onto your phone without your without your knowledge or consent, right? Yeah. Uh, seems seems likely to, to me. You know, they might have to. It might have to be sort of a, a stealth business where it's. It's downloaded under the guise of something else. One of the other apps that you sort of is on your phone that you can't get rid of. Um, yeah, and then the whole thing system. does, right. But it, mm -hmm. then the whole thing develops a sort of a, a weirdly, yes, a, a Machiavellian, rather troubling idea that, okay, now we can't get away from Big Brother who is watching us. You know? As I say, you know, in my, I, I mean, you may not feel the same level of inevitability, but I feel when they come down with this thing, you know, the first people to look at it is going to be government, state, federal, health agencies, what have you, to see if they can make the theoretical into, into the, the practical. And uh, oh, it would be very helpful. Any oh, health, whole healthcare industry would love it. You know, that, that would enable them to focus their work exactly where it's needed to get the cases very quickly, flatten the whole curve, you know, really stop things from spreading. Uh, you know, I, I, I would guess that there are healthcare industry upper echelon folks right now in, in, in the conversation with Apple and Google saying, how can how we ensure this gets onto people's phones so that we have this data, you know, um, because it's, it's so incredibly valuable. Well, there's two elements that feed into this to make it, um, you know, logically perfect. Um, one is the most obvious one is testing because we still don't have enough testing and the right. tests should be easy, fast, you know, like, like a pregnancy test. You, you hop into the bathroom, take a test and, and, you know, in two minutes flat, you know, what you, what you got. Yeah. <laughs> that would be uh, very valuable. Right. Now, one, one thing that could be interesting is um, you hop into the bathroom, take a test, whatever, sputum, whatever it is, um, but you can't read it. You can't read it. In order to read it, um, you have to have a sensor that looks, uh, maybe a, a QR code or something, that looks at the sensing device 
okay, and that sends it back to a health organization. And the health organization is the only one that can read the code on the QR, the QR picture, okay? And, huh. and okay, I that's like good. It. And it, it interprets that and it gives you an answer right, right. away. But in so doing, I hope Google and right. Apple are listening to this. In so doing, <clears throat> it's in the database. Now we know that you right. are tested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Positive. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I mean, you know, the tests, we right now have a, a whole slew of different tests. Uh, a lot of them have not been thoroughly themselves sort of verified or vetted very well. I presume they're not good. Uh, I'm sure they vary in quality. But yes, what you do want is a test that is, you know, gives, you know, no false positives, no false negatives, is quick, painless, uh, you know, absolutely reliable. Um, that's you know, that's a dream come true for everyone and cheap too of course so you, you, easy to make so you can get a lot of them out there quickly uh, yeah. it's it, it's what we what we really need I mean I mean testing and identification of particular of asymptomatic carriers is the, the you know what's what's gonna really uh, beat this thing back down you know uh, other than that, it's, Does, it's, it's the, a really hit or miss. Do you think that masks system. play a role in this, Ethan? In other words, if you're oh, yeah. making oh, a yeah. new paradigm, where do masks play the role in, you know, in in in, in pushing the curve down and in, in having no cases? Uh, if you had the app, and you had the testing, and you had that database, where would masks fit? Would would they help also? I, I believe I believe they would. Uh, particularly in places where people cannot help but congregate. Uh, for instance, uh, a condo building or a, any, any high rise building where you're in an elevator, right? You've got this small space, people are getting in and out of it all the time. Somebody gets into it, they cough, the doors open, they leave, you step in, right? Uh, yeah, unless you're, if your app immediately knew and, and says, you know, don't step into that elevator. That would be great, but that seems unlikely. And given the current technology, it's, uh, I think, you know, that's one of the big places where, where you really want to wear masks in, in space yeah. that has reasonably yeah. high levels of traffic, right? Um, and in a perfect world, we would have a mask with, a, with a, an RFID in it, and the phone would be able to know whether the mask was on our face. And right. if it should be, right. and it wasn't, could, the phone would remind us. You, you could have, if you, uh, if you were in a sophisticated, perfect world, right, you would have a test on the mask, right? If the mask, yes. outside of the mask ran into to viruses, it would, it would send a signal immediately saying you were in the presence of, you know, I'm sensing viruses around you, you know, do something. <laughs> uh, that'd, be, that'd be wonderful. Of course, a vaccine yeah. would make all of this unnecessary. <laughs> but in the future, I think we'll we'll have other coronaviruses that we we need to <clears throat> we need to uh, uh, deal with before we get to vaccine. So one right. more and, thing. And what, Go ahead. I I really like the fact. I mean, in back in 2014, we were preparing for this. Barack Obama basically said, "Hey, this is a huge upcoming health concern. We really need to put the machinery in place now, the mechanisms in place." And right now. You know, Bill Gates is sitting there funding, funding seven different companies to ramp up to full scale production for vaccines, knowing that probably five of those will just, they'll just be they'll go bust because they won't, they won't be ones that really work well. And only a couple of them will work well. But he's, he understands like it's so important to get the vaccine out there right now that he's willing to sort of toss billions of dollars at, at this issue, knowing essentially it will save trillions of dollars in the end. So. <clears throat> Well, I mean, it's a horrible thought, but I saw one little piece yesterday <clears throat> that where they said <clears throat> that this problem would be resolved if and when we can develop a vaccine. And it raised the specter, the possibility that we may not be able to do that, that our technology is not good enough quite yet. Global technology is not good enough to actually come up with a vaccine. And that is chilling. Oh, no, I, I, I think we'll have a vaccine. I think we'll have a vaccine fairly quickly. Your point that you just said a moment ago is the, the worrisome thing. So we, we get a vaccine for this one. What about next year? You know, 
the zoonotic viruses are all over the place, seem to, to show a, a nice ability to, to jump to people, you know, so we're bound to see something else. And if it's not a coronavirus, it's going to be one of the other viruses, you know, and that means a whole new thing. Yes, we need to be putting in place public health preparation systems, pandemic preparation systems to identify early instances, but also to, to just ramp up and be able to do it. Vaccines are incredibly time consuming to and, and yeah. scale up. And there needs to be huge investments, I think, in that, that whole technology to make that faster so you can create a vaccine and scale up production of it very, very quickly. Uh, I mean, it's still a lot of that is done the old fashioned way this has been done for 40 years uh, and, and, you know, with eggs and incubation and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a long process uh, to develop any quality. Yeah, we got to do, we got to do better. We got to find ways to skirt all that delay and hopefully somebody will, and it won't be 18 months, but let me go to one right. last question. We only have a minute left here. I, and this is a hard question. So we have this system, the system where we have a database of people, you know, who have uh, arguably have a test positive. Um, we have an app on everybody's phone that reads that one way or another. Enter the world of drones. Because China's using drones on this. They're monitoring things, watching things. Where do drones fit in, in our little, little universe that we just built, Ethan? Uh, how can drones help on this? Well, again, if, if they're linked in that same network, I mean, the drones, in a sense, a perfect thing to say, oh, look, here's a carrier walking down the street. Here's you. Uh, you're as yet two blocks away, but, you know, by the by, heads up, you know, there's a guy in a, in a red shirt who is a carrier who, who is seems to be on a potential path towards you, you know, watch out for him. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they could be very powerful. Uh, equally, of course, they, they could be used uh, very much as a course of control measure, too. You know, uh, you know, hey, you were supposed to be isolating. We saw that at 1035, you, you opened your door and stepped out to, you know, walk down the street. Um, you know? uh, so, yeah, yeah uh, as, as of many things, that, that, that very dual use. Yeah, but it, it sounds to me like drones would be an enforcement method, you know, um, rather than a sensing method or a notification method. Because in truth, if we're both on the same cell phone network, right, um, then the cell phone network is going to know you and it's going to know me. It's going to know whether I'm infected or you're infected. And that would be a very large network miles away. <clears throat> or you know a, a mile away or a half a mile away point is that the cell the cell phone network can tell you as much as a drone can about who's right. where and who's infected or not so it sounds like the value of a drone is really to enforce i mean i i recall reading you know they they have loudspeakers in, on the drones and the drone comes down over you and says you know <laughs> don't do this or you better go home or something it's right. like it's like a policeman <clears throat> right okay we're out of time ethan you want to have any final final words for people to make people aware of the issues here? Just, you know, well, use common sense, wear a mask in, in any crowded place, wash your hands, you know, self-isolate until this whole thing passes. Okay, knock wood. It should be successful for all of us, every single one. Yep. Yes, Thank indeed. you so much, Ethan. I hope we can do this Thank again. You, there are mil millions of uh, fish in the ocean and millions of issues to try. Uh, thank, thank you uh, so much for coming it. around. Aloha. Look forward to it. You take care.